to my channel and welcome back to another What's for Dinner. So I wanted to explain there's only three meals this week. Um, this past week has been crazy. My mom was in the hospital, then she got out of the hospital, and then she actually went back to the hospital and spent the night. Um, today is Saturday that I'm actually filming this part right here. And she went in last night, she got out today. Um, they're just if you know what's going on, I don't wanna go into details, but they're treating her for anxiety. Um, her heart, all the tests are coming back normal. Her heart is basically healthy as a horse. Um, so anyways, she's doing good. She's gonna be okay. It's just gonna take a while to get over the incident that happened, but she's okay. That's the main thing, she's okay. Health-wise, she's good, she's okay. So during this whole time, I've not been home. I So far, I've only cooked one meal this week. So what I'm gonna do today, I am going to cook up a shepherd's pie and I'm also gonna cook another meal. I think it was called beef and broccoli or something like that because the beef is already thawed out. I, well, I didn't freeze it whenever I got it from the grocery pickup. I didn't freeze it because I was gonna have it sooner. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix that as well. And part of the shepherd's pie, I'm gonna bring over to my mom and her husband. And then whatever we don't eat, we'll just go in the fridge and we can have it for lunch for leftovers. So I do apologize that there's only three meals, but I wanted to get something out there for you guys. And I hope it's okay. So I hope you guys enjoy it. And like I said, I do apologize, hopefully, Hopefully, fingers crossed, this coming week will be a much better week. I'm actually on vacation and I'll be cooking a little more. Next week, you will have more meals to watch in my next week's What's for Dinner. So without further ado, let's get to cooking. Okay guys, so for this shepherd pie, this is like the easiest shepherd's pie you could ever make. So I'm actually doubling the recipe because I'm gonna, like I said, bring some over to my mom. Um, so I have two pounds of hamburger meat, and then I have two packs of the Bob Evans sour cream and chives, and classic mixed vegetables. I should have two of these, but I only have one, so it's gonna be a little scarce on the vegetables. Um, mild cheddar cheese, and this you can use as much as you want or as little as you want. And minced garlic and pepper. You first want to brown your hamburger meat, and once it starts browning, then I'll add in the minced garlic and the pepper. This isn't cooked all the way, but I am going to go ahead and drain it, and then I'll add in the garlic and pepper. I'm gonna add in about a tablespoon of garlic. I would actually put a little bit more if I was making this just for us but because I'm giving it to someone else, I don't know if they like garlic as much as we do, so I'm only gonna do a tablespoon. I'm gonna cook this just a little bit longer until there's no more pink. I feel like there's a little bit of pink there. You know, I love using this big fork. Um, don't mind my thumbnail, you see that? It broke, this one needs polished. Anyways, this big huge fork, my mom always used a big fork like this to cut up the hamburger meat and stuff whenever she was browning it. So that's just what I always used. But my sister-in-law, she makes fun of me or she has made fun of me because I use this fork. She has one of those fancy Pampered Chef tools and I thought about getting one. I don't know. Do you guys have one? Do you have one of those Pampered Chef meat choppers? I'm not sure what the actual name is, but I've thought about getting one. Hint, hint, sister-in-law, if you're watching this, Christmas is coming. Okay, so I forgot to mention, before you start browning your hamburger meat, you need to go ahead and preheat the oven. I put it on 350. 
Now I'm just gonna let this sit here for a while on low while I heat up the mashed potatoes. So I'm just gonna pop these in the microwave. I believe it's about, I believe it's about five minutes. Nope, microwave on three minutes and then pull back film and stir, continue heating for an additional two to three minutes. I like to keep these type of pans on hand for cases like this. I want to prepare somebody something and bring them a dish. Uh, that way they don't have to worry about getting my dish back to me, getting the dish back to the right person. You just take this and they can throw it away when they're finished. So what you're gonna do now is put your vegetables all on the bottom of the pan. You guys know in my grocery hauls, y'all know that we like cheese. We love our cheese around here. So I'm actually going to put a little bit of cheese on top of the veggies. The next layer is going to be your hamburger meat. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, Mandy, I thought you were keto. And I am, and this is not keto, obviously, because of the potatoes. But what I try to do is scrape off as much of the potatoes as I can. Actually, today, I have not had anything to eat at all. I've been fasting, and it is 5.30 in the evening, and I have not had anything to eat today, except for my skinny tea. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I am talking about my Teeny Blends tea, which I love. If you follow me over on Instagram, you will see some of my posts on my skinny tea. Okay, I'm gonna grab the mashed potatoes. The directions on the mashed potatoes says three minutes in the microwave, then you stir it and put it back in the microwave for two to three minutes. I am not going to do that because it's going to be going into the oven. So I'm just gonna kind of mix it up a little bit, make sure all the seasoning and everything is mixed in. And then you're gonna add it to your hamburger meat. And then you just want to smooth it out. This is a super quick and easy meal that you can do if you're a work outside of the home mom, or if you're just a busy stay at home mom. This is super quick. My kids love this, my oldest daughter would go nuts over it. She absolutely loved it. Isn't that pretty? Mm, that smells so good. I wish y'all could smell it. Okay, so next I am going to add on the cheese. And again, with the cheese, you can add as much or as little as you want. We are cheese lovers, so we like a lot of cheese. So I'm gonna pop this into the oven, and I'm not sure exactly how long it takes. You just want it to where the cheese is nice and melted and just bubbly. Look at that, how pretty. That is just perfect. Okay. 
Okay, the next meal that I am cooking today is this keto low carb beef and broccoli. It looks really, really good. So what I need to do, I didn't realize that I had to marinate this, but what I need to do first is cut the flat iron steak into very thin slices and then add the beef to a small bag with the coconut aminos, ginger, and garlic. And I have to let it marinate for one hour. So what you need is one pound and this is not, so I may have to decrease everything. This is only half a pound. I was wondering about that. I'll just decrease everything in half and we'll still have it. But I'm gonna tell you what the actual recipe is so that you know what it's called for. And I will leave the link down in the description because I got this from Pinterest. Okay, so what you're gonna need is one pound of the flat iron steak, half a pound of broccoli, one quarter cup of coconut oil, which I do not have out with me, and then one teaspoon of toasted sesame oil. And when I was reading about the recipe, it said to make sure that it's toasted sesame oil, not just regular sesame seed oil, but toasted. And then one teaspoon of fish sauce. And then for the marinade, you need a quarter cup of the coconut aminos, one teaspoon of ground ginger, and two cloves of garlic chopped. And y'all know that I like to use the minced garlic. Okay, so I'm gonna put my marinade together. Okay, I'll see you in an hour. This is going in the fridge. I'm gonna go ahead and measure out my other ingredients. Okay, it's been marinating for about an hour, a little bit over an hour. So let's get this cooked and done up because it is now 8.13 in the evening and I wanna go sit down and rest. <laughs> okay, so the first thing we actually need to do is blanch the broccoli for two minutes in boiling water and then drain it really well. And I'm trying to get my water boiling but I guess it would help if I would actually turn the burner on. My stove is really dirty. I haven't been able to clean it this past week, so it's dirty. Okay, let's get this water boiling and blanch the broth. It says to drain the beef from the marinade. I'm just gonna pick it up and put it into my hot coconut oil. Okay, you want to reserve the liquid for later. This is actually gonna be the stir fry sauce. So we're just gonna set this to the side. And you wanna stir fry the beef one to three minutes until it's nice and brown. Okay, so I'm gonna blanch the broccoli for two minutes in boiling water, although it's not quite boiling yet. And then I'm gonna drain it really well. So my meat is done now. I'm going to go ahead and remove it from the pan. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and drain the broccoli. 
And now you want to add the broccoli to your oil. So you want to stir fry the broccoli until crisp tender for about three minutes and then add the remaining marinade that we were saving and cook for two more minutes. You guys, this smells so, so good. It's been about two minutes. I'm gonna add my beef back into the pan. And then you want to add in the fish sauce and the toasted sesame oil. Okay, so I am gonna try this really quick because it smells delicious. Mmm. That is really good, y'all. Very, very good. It tastes just like, actually even better than Chinese restaurants. That is delicious. The link for this recipe will be down in the description. Make sure you check it out. This is definitely a keeper. So for tonight, we're gonna to be having tangy tomato chipotle butter. These little seasoning packets, I got this from Publix, and it was over in the produce section. It's called Southern Secret. They have several different flavors. So we are going to be fixing this with chicken. I got two packs. I like it because it is low carb. It has only one gram of carb, um, and there's four servings in it. So I'm actually gonna be using two packets. Another thing that I like about this, it has, it's hard to read through the camera, so I'm gonna bring it over to the side. On the back, it has what it pairs well with. So this says bell peppers, onions, grape tomatoes, and red peppers. It says to preheat the pan over medium high heat, cook or pre-cut veggies in pan two minutes, add flavor pouch to veggies, cook to desired readiness. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my chicken into my iron skillet. I already have some ghee in there. Um, you guys know we use this a lot. So I have some ghee in the skillet already getting warmed up. And I'm gonna put the chicken in there, cook it a little bit, and then I'm gonna put the seasoning packet in there and then put the veggies in there as well and let that cook. I'm also going to fix rice on the side for everybody else. So I already have my onions, red pepper, green pepper cut up, and I already cut up all of my chicken. So let's get to cooking it. And that's a wrap for this week's What's for Dinner. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know it wasn't a whole lot of meals, but I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe. Click on that bell if you haven't done so already. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.